In the heart of France during the 15th century, a monstrous figure named Gilles de Rai emerged from shadows. This man, born of noble blood, a military leader, a trusted companion of Joan of Arc, seemed to personify the era's deepest fears. Yet beneath his respectable facade, he was a predator. Born into wealth and privilege, Gilles de Rai exploited his status to commit horrific acts of violence, all in a twisted pursuit of occult powers and to satiate the dark demons he sought to ally himself with. Among his most infamous crimes was the abduction of an innocent child from a neighboring village under the false promise of a thrilling adventure. The reality, however, was a bleak contrast. Within the confines of his grand fortress, Rais inflicted such cruelty that it sent tremors of dread among those who would later unravel his deeds. The child was subjected to unthinkable horrors, their cries for mercy ignored. His actions weren't the result of sudden madness, they were cold and calculated. His callousness was intentional. The innocence of the abducted child served only to feed his dark urges, their agony a source of grotesque pleasure. This terrifying tale of abduction and cruelty is just one of the many atrocities linked to Gilles de Rey. Each crime executed with ruthless efficiency, with an utter disregard for human life. Each victim, carefully selected, had their lives cruelly extinguished in their prime. The child's abduction was not the end, but an introduction into Gilles de Rey's sinister world. A world where the boundary between reality and nightmare was obscured, and where his victims were ensnared in his clutches with no hope of escape. This was but a glimpse into the dark world of Gilles de Rey, a man whose life was deeply entwined with crime and occult practices. Gilles de Reyes, born in the year 1405, was destined for a life filled with darkness and despair. In the early days of the 15th century, nestled in the heart of the French nobility, Gilles de Rey entered the world. Born into a prestigious family, Gilles was a child of privilege, but beneath the veneer of wealth and status, early signs of his cruel nature began to emerge. As a young boy, tales of his unbridled rage and sadistic tendencies circulated amongst the household staff. This was a child who found a perverse pleasure in inflicting pain on those weaker than himself. But these sinister traits were overlooked, brushed aside as mere childhood eccentricities. As Gilles grew, so too did his taste for violence. His adolescence was marred by a thirst for power and a growing fascination with the macabre. He was drawn to tales of war and conquest, of knights and kings battling for supremacy. His mind, it seemed, was a breeding ground for dark fantasies. When the flames of the Hundred Years' War ignited, Gilles was a young man, eager to prove his mettle. He threw himself into the conflict with a fervor that stunned his peers. His bravery on the battlefield was undeniable, but so was his barbarity. He reveled in the chaos of war, in the primal thrill of combat. His fellow soldiers spoke in hushed whispers of his ruthless tactics and his insatiable lust for bloodshed. As he carved a path of destruction through the war-torn landscapes of France, Gilles' reputation grew. He was hailed as a war hero, a beacon of French resilience. But beneath the accolades and the admiration, a monster was brewing. His experiences in war only served to fan the flames of his dark desires. Even in his early life, Gilles de Rey exhibited signs of the monster he would become. His journey from a privileged child to a feared warrior was marked by a steady descent into darkness. The seeds of cruelty sown in his childhood would blossom into a chilling legacy of terror and death. As Gilles de Reyes grew older, his thirst for cruelty intensified, leading him down a path of unspeakable crimes. A once revered knight and companion to Joan of Arc, his life took a sinister turn forever etching his name into the annals of infamous criminals. Gilles de Reyes's heinous spree began with the abduction of local children. He lured them with promises of food, clothing or jobs at his castle. Once ensnared, the children would never be seen again. These were not random acts of violence. They were premeditated and meticulously planned, showing a chilling degree of calculation and cold-bloodedness. But abduction was merely the beginning. Gilles de Reyes's true depravity lay in the sadistic pleasure he derived from the torture and murder of his victims. The accounts of his crimes are truly chilling. He would often watch as his victims were ceremoniously bathed and dressed before their execution. 
Then, in an act of unspeakable cruelty, he would end their lives, taking perverse delight in their suffering. Yet, despite the monstrous nature of his actions, Gilles de Rees remained largely untouchable for years. His noble status and wealth shielded him from suspicion, allowing his reign of terror to go unchecked. But as the number of missing children grew, so did the whispers of his dark deeds. Eventually, the horrifying truth could no longer be ignored. Gilles de Reis was brought to trial, charged with the murder of over 100 children. The trial was a spectacle, drawing crowds from across France. The evidence against him was damning, including damning testimonies from his own accomplices and the haunting remains discovered on his property. In a shocking twist, Gilles de Reilly confessed to his crimes. It should be noted here that his confession was given under threat of torture. However, almost all historians agree based on other available evidence that he was indeed guilty of the crimes he was accused of. Per the documentation available from the time, his confession was not one of remorse, but rather one of arrogance. He seemed to take a perverse pleasure in recounting his crimes, delighting in the shock and horror of the court. His confession painted a terrifying picture of a man who reveled in cruelty and had no regard for human life. The court found Gilles de Rey guilty and sentenced him to death. The once revered knight was hanged and his body burned, a fitting end for a man who had caused so much suffering. Yet even in death, his legacy of terror lived on. His crimes left a deep scar on the French countryside, a grim reminder of the monster that once roamed their lands. Gilles de Reyes, however, was not just a murderer. He was also deeply involved in the occult. His fascination with the arcane was as prominent as his bloodlust, a dark thread woven into the tapestry of his life. In the heart of medieval France, the occult was a clandestine realm, a secret world of alchemists and sorcerers, whispers of forbidden knowledge and power, and Gilles de Rey, with his insatiable curiosity and desire for control, was irresistibly drawn to it. His castle, a towering edifice of stone and shadow, became a haven for practitioners of the dark arts. Alchemists and sorcerers were frequently among his guests, their presence a testament to his fascination with their craft. He sought their wisdom, their secrets, their promises of power and immortality. In the echoing halls of his castle, Amidst the flickering candlelight, they spoke of arcane rituals and hidden truths, of the ways to bend the world to one's will. But Gilles de Reyes was not content to merely dabble in the occult. He sought to master it. In his quest for power, he attempted to summon demons, to breach the veil between the mortal world and the infernal realms. He believed that by doing so, he could gain supernatural abilities, that he could transcend his human limitations. This was a man who, in his hubris, sought to challenge the very laws of nature. His attempts were carried out in secret, hidden within the labyrinthine corridors of his castle. He held clandestine rituals, surrounded by his coterie of alchemists and sorcerers. They would gather in the dead of night, chanting in ancient tongues, their voices a haunting melody that echoed through the stone halls. The air would crackle with tension, with anticipation, as they sought to pierce the veil, to call forth beings of unimaginable power. Yet, the demons Gilles de Reyes sought to summon never appeared. His rituals for all their spectacle were ineffective, but this did not deter him. Instead, it only fueled his obsession, his desperation for power. He continued his attempts, his determination unwavering, his belief in the occult unshaken. Gilles de Rey's obsession with the occult only added another layer of darkness to his already sinister persona. It painted him as a man not only driven by a thirst for blood, but also by a hunger for power, a man who would stop at nothing to achieve his goals. His involvement in the occult, his attempts to summon demons, they were a testament to his disregard for the natural order, for the sanctity of life. They were a reflection of his inner darkness, a mirror to his twisted soul. In 1440, Gilles de Reyes's reign of terror came to an end, but not before a trial that shocked the nation. The trial, held in the city of Nantes, was a spectacle that drew a crowd from far and wide. The evidence against Gilles was overwhelming, and the details of his crimes were enough to curdle the blood of any who heard them. The prosecution presented a damning case, detailing the horrific nature of Gilles' deeds. Witnesses, 
many of them servants and associates of Gilles, spoke of his perverse rituals and the young lives he cruelly snuffed out. The court heard of his obsession with the occult, his twisted attempt to summon demons through the sacrifice of innocent children. The evidence painted a picture of a man lost to his own monstrous desires, a man whose noble birthright was stained by the darkest of deeds. As the trial progressed, the atmosphere grew heavy with horror and disbelief. How could a man of such standing, a man who had once fought alongside Joan of Arc, descend into such depths? The question haunted the minds of all present, a chilling reminder of the darkness that can lurk in the human heart. In a shocking twist, Gilles confessed to his crimes, albeit as noted under threat of torture, which must be taken into consideration. His admission, cold and matter-of-fact, sent a wave of revulsion through the court. There was no remorse in his voice, no sense of guilt for the lives he had stolen. His confession sealed his fate, confirming what many had already suspected. Indeed, it is likely that an innocent man would have undergone the torture rather than admit to the killing of some many helpless children. A guilty man would gain nothing by going through the torture. The sentence was pronounced, death by hanging. Gilles was led to the gallows, his once proud figure now a symbol of fear and revulsion. The crowd watched in grim satisfaction as the noose tightened around his neck, their cheers and jeers echoing through the square. Gilles de Reyes met his end on the gallows, his life a testament to the depths of human depravity. His story serves as a chilling reminder of the darkness that can lie beneath a veneer of nobility and power, a warning of the monstrous deeds that can be committed when one loses sight of their humanity. Gilles de Reilly was a man whose life was marked by cruelty and darkness. As we draw the curtain on this chilling narrative, it's crucial to ponder the key points of Gilles de Reyes's life, his monstrous crimes, and his occult practices. Born into a life of privilege and wealth in the early 15th century, Gilles displayed early signs of psychopathic behavior in childhood, with his noted cruelty and propensity for violence. Other factors that may have influenced the monster he became were noted familial discord in his childhood and the premature loss of his parents. Furthermore, his experiences with Joan of Arc in the 100 Years' War may have left Gilles with post-traumatic stress disorder and a desire to exert control on the violent and chaotic world that he saw around him. He was accused of the abduction, torture and murder of countless children, his victims chosen indiscriminately from among the peasantry in the streets. Gila's crimes were not merely acts of violence, but were steeped in a perverse attempt to gain otherworldly influence and assistance. His desperation for power and fortune led him down a rabbit hole of black magic and alchemy. He sought the secrets of the universe, hoping to manipulate them for his own purposes. To this end, Gilles conducted several heinous rituals involving the brutal sacrifice of children. His obsession with the occult was so profound that it consumed his life, ultimately leading to his downfall. Whilst no excuses can be made for the crimes that Gilles de Rey committed, we can at least attempt to gain an understanding of the twisted logic he operated under, at minimum to recognize and prevent it from occurring in others. War, grief, and unhappy childhoods leave lasting damage on even the most pure of souls, never mind a soul that seems to have been tainted from childhood as Gilles's appeared to be. Gilles was convicted and sentenced to death, a fitting end for a man who had inflicted so much pain and suffering. His death, however, did little to erase the dark shadow his life had cast. His crimes remain etched in history, in conclusion, Gilles de Reilly was a man whose life was a terrifying blend of power, cruelty, and darkness. He was a nobleman turned monster, a warrior turned child murderer, a seeker of knowledge turned practitioner of the dark arts. His life serves as a grim reminder of the monstrous acts humans are capable of when consumed by power, greed, and a complete disregard for the sanctity of life. Thank you all for joining me on this harrowing journey through the life and times of Gilles de Reyes. If you have any true crime or paranormal events you would like me to look into in more depth, then please leave your recommendations in the comments. I also write creepypasta and stories for YouTube shorts, so if you would like to give me a topic to create a story for you, then please let me know in the comments. Please like, share, comment and subscribe as it really helps out a new channel like mine. And the good news is that it costs you absolutely nothing. 
If you would like to further support the channel, you can check out our Patreon link in the pinned comments and in the video description. On Patreon, you will get early access to all of my videos and exclusive reactions. In addition, you will get access to all of my husband's channel's exclusive TV and movie reaction videos, such as Band of Brothers, X Movie, Sexy Beast Movie, and The Wolf's Creek Movie. God bless you, God bless your families, and until next time, bye for now.